say hi you're waiting for Facebook. Hey guys, <laughs> welcome back to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner Dean. Today we are doing a, a very exciting uh, show today. It is and it's jail 65 katie 65 episodes uh, can you believe it I, 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 if, if you were closer i would give you a fist bump like, <laughs> celebratory fist bump <laughs> Woo! because uh that's 65 episodes since last year in february that's pretty awesome uh it's oil pastels and oil sticks the differences and the uses of each because they're not the same thing and i see so many artists uh even uh, I, I think i've seen one in one person in our facebook live like our group, our Jerry's Live group, uh, where they were talking about it. So I decided this was something we probably should better educate ourselves on because it's not all kitty materials. Um, there are actually professional oil pastels and then the oil sticks go from that, that to like zero to 90 in 3.2 seconds. So, uh, but first, while we're getting started, just kind of getting everybody in on this. I did notice on YouTube, since we're broadcasting now on Facebook and YouTube, both live, um, I cannot respond to the comments, to the individual comments when people ask questions actually on the live feed. So if we don't get to your questions and you're on YouTube and they're not answered during our show, we will, um, I'll put them in the comments, just the regular comments. Don't you think that's probably the best to do it so that at least I can answer those questions um just in the regular yeah it won't let us go back in that no it's more like a screen recording of the comments yes, going through a live time so, yes so it's just getting used to that as a, as a new platform so but you don't have to worry about that with, with the facebook live feed i can actually comment right there in the thing and it will notify you that i've commented so that's the thing if you've asked a question you're gonna have to go back and check because unless we can figure out a fancy way to tag people i don't know so katie will help me because i'm Technology, technologically um, challenged. We'll see if we can figure it out. Maybe we can yeah. get you a YouTube profile, or yeah. if they want to tag it in the Facebook Live group. Yeah, they go there. I don't we'll know. Figure it out. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. out. But for you YouTube people, if you don't know, we do have a Facebook, uh, a, a Jerry Live group on Facebook itself. It is a private group. You will have to answer a question to join. But it's a really awesome community full of people that are becoming friends that are starting to hang out even locally if they can find other people locally that are hanging out online i've noticed some of the people are now like private friends with some of the people and everybody is super awesome and supportive there's been no trolls to kick off which is has been awesome so i know don't jinx me knock on some wood um so consider joining that because it's really fun um I post show notes after the show there. I post the notes that I do the show from. So if there's things about those products that I've said that you're, you want to go back and look and don't want to have to rewatch the episode to take, you know, quick scribbled notes, you can go back and actually get those notes. Um, I also post sometimes things that I'm working on in there and just kind of other fun things in there as well. So it's a way if you don't follow my Facebook page, my artist Facebook page that you kind of can see some of the things that I even personally might be working on. So, um, so anyway, um, before we get started with this, Art of the Carolinas, several of the people on our private uh, group have been asking that going to be up and live. If you went to Art of the Carolinas last year, the website just went up, was it July 1st? Yep, July 1st. So while I was out on vacation last week, the website was up. Uh, it's the 18th annual. I know. Can you believe it? So awesome. I've only um, missed one. Huh? I've only missed one. I've only missed one. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, 100 workshops, 100 plus workshops, 35 plus instructors, uh, besides just the huge, ridiculously huge trade show event, 30,000 square feet of art supplies. It's just ridiculous. Um, at the lowest prices that you will all year lower than employee discount prices most of it so it's, it's a great place to come and stock up um that is this november it is 9th 10th and 11th for the big retail event where you can go in it's free to go in there it is at the north raleigh hilton is that considered midtown it's the north raleigh hilton midtown north the official raleigh name hilton midtown 
Um, and, and it's by the retail store. There's a free limo shuttle service back and forth. So if there's something they don't have in there, the retail store will have it. Um, and the workshops are the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th because they do start, the workshops do start on Thursday before the retail event opens while they're setting it up. Um, a couple of people asked, was I going to be instructing? I am again this year. Thursday evening, I've got an acrylics workshop uh, from 5 to 8. And then Saturday, I've got an oil workshop from 5 to 8, the 8 as well. So I will be there. And I'll be there on the trade floor doing demos during the day, all of those days. Um, so you can always come and say hi. And I'm a hugger, like I will admit. So. I'll just apologize now, unless you're like, hey, Amy, it's nice to meet you. Don't me. Then we're cool. So, um, so anyway, artofthecarolinas.com, they're going to put that up. Yes. Um, Amanda mentioned, she said they've had a bunch of people calling customers to have some questions and stuff about classes. But if you contact Sharon through that website, okay. you're going to get the best answers. Sharon she knows Julia everything. She's in charge of this whole shebang. She's the head and diva. She is, she's the head goddess. She's the head diva. Well, she is a diva, but she's still kind of the head goddess of this whole thing. She, she she's, she's like a goddess. She makes miracles happen. So um, definitely contact her through the artofthecarolines.com website. If you website. contact us at customer service, we're just going to have to send yeah, you that one. Customer service is yeah. just going to send you there anyway. So just take, take the quick trip and, and go there yourself. They can also book their hotel rooms through a link on that site to get the Art oh, of the Carolinas awesome. discount. Yes. And do that fast because they sell out like yes. crazy. And, well, they're already here yesterday, actually, and they're already pretty sold out. And we are going to do, we're going to, in the next, in the next, like, three weeks, I think Sharon said, mm -hmm. the, the Hilton was under construction last year. They still worked wonderfully with us, and it was still, even though it was kind of odd in some places with tools and such, with kind of getting places, it still was really awesome. It is a freaking just it's beautiful now. now. Gorgeous. So we're actually going to go not with a live show, but we're going to go live at some point there or pre-record something so you can actually see kind of what it looks like and, and what you can expect from the venue itself. Um, so anyway, so that's that. And then we'll go live a couple of times too, like we did last oh, no. year. During the show, we'll yep. go live. Will, Will and I, Will, Will's a hugger as well. I know that a lot of the ladies on here will like that after the 4th of July episode. He will not be wearing the same purple robe. <laughs> just just a, just a disclaimer. So, all right. So let's, let's go ahead and get started with this. Oil pastels and oil sticks, what are the differences? It's, it, it seems like it shouldn't be that different, but it really is. Um, with the oil pastels, they are actually something that does not dry. They are done with mineral oil, which is not a drying oil. Oil paint is so durable and slow flexible because it is mixed with drying oils, whether it's linseed, whether it's poppy, whether it's walnut, whether it's safflower. Oil paints form a very hard, impervious skin that is extremely durable to wear and tear once the painting is completely dry. Oil pastels, you can do an oil pastel and 10 years later rub it with your finger if it's not covered with something and that oil pastel will come right up. Oil pastels have to be fixed with a oil pastel fixative if you're going to not frame them and display them. Um, oil pastels also versus oil sticks have a much broader range of quality in between from very low student grade uh, that's really not, not much more than a wax cram with a little oil to some very nice, swanky, professional grade. Um, oil sticks, it's a little bit of a gap, is definitely much less between those. So we'll talk about all these brands and stuff as we're going along. Um, what works best for mixed media works, we're going to discuss that. Where and how you can use them, if you want to use oil sticks with other media, we will discuss where that will need to happen. If you have questions during this, please, please, please ask. We've got a monitor for both of these platforms. Amanda Frida is on Facebook. They will get those questions to me. And with this episode, guys, because there's weird questions that'll pop up, if I'm taking a breath, just jump in. Go, hey, Amy. I know how you work. <laughs> she does. So, all right. So let's start with oil pastels. 
Um, they're also known as wax oil crayons to some people. Uh, the drawing and painting medium, it's very similar to kind of how soft pastels work and or wax crayons both. It's not powdery like soft pastels, where soft pastels, it's very dusty, they're very brittle, they break and kind of crumble easily. Um, they have a harder edge than soft pastels generally. They're more difficult to dry though than soft, or I mean, excuse me, to blend than dry pastels. Um, with the higher quality ones, it's, it's much easier, like the Sennelier, uh, it's much more buttery, it's much easier to do. But versus like a student grade uh, of the oil pastels versus a soft pastel, you're gonna really see the difference. It's much more difficult to try to get those colors to blend easily. Um, the pigment is mixed with a non-drying oil and a wax binder. So that's a mineral oil. Um, you really need to either frame it glass to keep it protected from dust, dirt, debris, because if you're not gonna put a fixative on it, this stuff will, it's, it's like, it's like putting lotion on and then walking through a room full of cats. You know by the time you start, right, and walk through that room, you're going to have cat hair stuck to you if you've got That's lotion on. the weirdest analogy okay, but, but, think, but think about it. If you've got it an oil, if you do an oil pastel work and you don't put something over it, Katie, what is it going to do? It's yeah, like it's a yeah. magnet. It's going to attract dust and dirt and pull them in, and it's going to get stuck in your work, yeah. and that's going to be it. It's so, true. So how do you, it's just also you, very I'm weird. sorry for the most creepy analogy in the world I could have come up with, but this is a good way to remember, oh my God, I'm done with this. I need to put fixative on them immediately. Sennelier makes a fixative specifically for uh, oil pastels that allows you to do this. That made my heart skip a beat just a second there. I'm not yeah, going to lie. Okay, that's mine. So I feel confident in doing that, but it's multiple layers of the fixative, the light layers, light layers, light layers, it's an acrylic resin that builds up and it keeps it well protected. Even they looked <laughs> a little bit of panic. <laughs> people out. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so where do these come about? Because most people know oil paints, but these, what the heck, 1921 in Japan, uh, Sakura company actually invented them as crepas as an alternative to apparently the Japanese then were very much into horrible making children do art with like black and white and just horrible and lifeless. So some teacher and his brother-in-law who was an inventor were very dear and tried to make the world a more colorful place for Japanese children. Developed these pastels. Uh, the original mixture was paraffin, stearic acid, coconut oil, and pigment. Think about coconut oil in your cabinet. When it's hot, what does it do? Turns into like a liquid, right? When it's cold, it is like rock hard. They actually had to make a summer and a winter pastel. I know. Really? Who, who knew? Huh. That's, yeah, when I was researching this, I was like, what? And I was like, okay, well, that makes, makes sense. Because it's got coconut oil in it. Mm. So until they redeveloped it in the, 1924 and made it more blendable, more highly pigmented, and it was much easier to work with. They didn't have to, they put a stabilizer in it besides that then it was okay. Then go on into the 30s and into the 40s, they get Picasso, who of course we know Picasso likes to work with, like, like to work with all sorts of crazy stuff, right? Um, got into doing artwork with news, not archival. Sakura somehow got him hooked on these. He was very excited by them. He used them in a lot of sketches and drawings. In 1947, he could not get them because of the war. No oil pastels because, you know, we're, we're with Japan, so that's take your oil pastels and that's it. So who did he talk to? He went to Henri Snellier and he got him to develop a fine art version of oil pastels, uh, which he worked on for two years. Finally, he got the formula that he was very happy with. Picasso actually has 50 colors the 50 color set on our website that's the wood box is actually the Picasso picked colors that Picasso used um, and then they you know went from there to develop they had other colors but those were the ones he specifically said were the ones he wanted to use so Picasso pretty much is the the father of the modern oil pastel for fine artists I mean that's I think that's just a really safe awesome thing to say so uh, 
I'm for as big of a jerk as he was, I, we're going to give him that, Amanda. We're going to give Picasso the, the credit. Oh, well, we should probably. Yeah, we should. <laughs> She's just like, why are Sorry, you? Sorry, I'm looking at No, 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 I'm just being a smart aleck. Hey, I'm just making sure while you're looking at me. <laughs> yeah. I was peering over Frida's shoulder. Oh, okay. I think somebody from Facebook wanted to know if you could use cheap hairspray as a fix it. That's that's you can use with charcoal. I wouldn't recommend it archivally, but that's something with charcoal or graphite, just like a, as a workable fixative. But then also consider all the butanes and things like that and hairspray and how easily you can turn it into like a spray torch. Yeah. Not good to put on your paper, which is what a flammable, you know, or a, a I guess not fire friendly material to start with. So no, I definitely would not use that. Um, all right, so oil pastel uses, they can be used dry or you can actually use solvent to blend them or other vegetable oils. I'm going to say this, use a solvent that completely evaporates, something more like that's not petroleum distillate. There's some people that use those. Petroleum distillates will ooze and soak into your paper and then leave these kind of mildly stained rings that I've seen. So you want to use something that's going to evaporate completely like a solvent, like turpentine, like the, I prefer the Chelsea lavender um, to do that with. Yes, Amanda. Please just say not your kitchen vegetable oil. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Or please tell me. vegetable oil, you know. You better not be thinking that. No, drying oils. But I mean, it, it, safflower oil, that's something you can use for food too. You could actually probably use sunflower oil. The biggest of this, I wouldn't use vegetable oils because they are a drying oil. These don't dry. Why would you, that's like taking, you know, tomato sauce because it's a fluid and putting it with peanut butter because it's another fluid making a sandwich out of it. No one wants to eat that. So, so just, just I would recommend unless you just don't have anything else to help kind of mix that. Um, with oil pastels, with some of the softer ones, you can actually create effects with them to a point. Um, they're probably one of the best things for traveling that's not restricted by the uh, FAA because they're not a drying oil, therefore they're not flammable. You're not, they don't contain any solvent they don't contain a drying oil that tends to make them more flammable. So all these art are pigmented art sticks. That's all you have to tell them. Ta-da. I brought my set of 72 to Denmark. Yeah. See, uh, they don't regulate these. So yeah. they're fantastic. You don't have to, I mean, you can, you can always blend them later with solvents when you get there and leave the solvent, right? If you can't do it with your finger, but so that's a really handy thing that takes oil painting and takes you on the road and makes it much, much easier to have more oil-like pigments on the road, all right? Uh, now, the issues that these have, and, and these aren't anything bad, but what I'm, the reason I'm telling you this is you need to know the perks and you need to know the detractants in any material that you work with to decide, okay, based on this knowledge, how best does this material work for me? Or does this material work for me? Does it not work for me? Does it actually make it better for me to work with? They don't oxidize, so they have to have that special fixative or be put under glass. Or put it in a drawer with, you know, between some, um, some glassine paper to keep it safe so it doesn't rub and all that until you can frame it. Um, it's a non-oxidizing oil, so it means it continues to absorb into your substrate, which reduces the flexibility of your color film over time. What I'm gonna tell you that means is that it's gonna be better to work on panels, it's gonna be better to work on paper. You can put like a foam core behind it for framing. Um, it's, you don't wanna put this on something that's flexible or that you wanna to continue to use as something flexible because it can actually potentially crack over time because of that steric acid as it dries out. Um, steric acid makes paper very brittle over time. The way around that, use a product like 
the Arsh's oil paper. The paper's actually impregnated with a chemical that makes it so that it's not gonna absorb that oil in and be prone to drying out and the damage, okay? Um, oil pastels, depending on the brand, lower quality means this is gonna have a higher propensity of happening, will cause fatty acids to get wax bloom. What happens is those acids rise, they turn very opaque and almost white, and suddenly you've got this kind of cloudy weirdness going on where it's like, what happens? What happened to my artwork? Ah, happens. Think about student grade stuff. Your kid brings something home. They've used oil pastels. It starts getting cloudy and weird. You can actually buff that off very gently with a soft cloth. But over time, if that's left on there, it can cause crumbling and cracking. Okay. As soon as you're done with the work, another reason to put this on is if you seal it, it doesn't allow that stuff to come up and escape keeps the wax bloom from going on now i will say having used the professional quality oil pastels i've not seen the wax bloom the lower end ones definitely do that um this work actually in particular when we go through one of these brands they have a great big jumbo one and i use that for the background thinking oh that would be better coverage to get that black 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 and then within the week it started looking gray 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 and i had to buff it off Amanda, it looked like you had a question. Did Somebody I answer? on YouTube wanted to know the difference between glassine and wax or deli paper. Uh, Repeat the question. Hmm? Repeat the question. They wanted to know the difference between glassine and either like wax or deli paper. I think glassine is pH neutral, so it doesn't have acid in it. I don't know about the wax paper I'd be afraid of just because if there's any heat, like you, you've got either like an un air conditioned area, you're taking an, a material that's soft made out of oils and then you're taking something that's made out of wax that's melty. Not, I, I would say just stick with the glassine because it's designed to actually be put with artwork. Yes, Frida. Mina wanted to know if you can put encaustic wax on oil pastels. Um, encaustic sand oil pastels and oil sticks can all play nicely together. Yes. It's not a problem. Both of this can be used interchangeably because your encaustic stuff is generally going to be at least sealed with one coat of clear encaustic wax. So those will be sealed in under it and won't be able to come up. All right. Good question, actually. That's thank you, Nina. All right. So let's start out with more kind of the student kind of basic intro grade uh, oil pastels. The Monkeyo makes some very inexpensive, but still not like the lowest end quality. Um, you know, so this isn't going to be what you're going to get in a big box retail store, you know, in their little art department. These are um, the standard. They have two varieties, the standard and the gallery. We'll talk about the standard first. Strong pigment content. They're easy to blend. Um, it does have the color name on the wrapper, so you know what color it is if you want to reorder the open stock. Uh, which is kind of nice because if you've got a set and you find you're using, you know, the same colors a lot of, it's an easy way to know to reorder. Um, it is a firmer formulation than their gallery pastels, so they're a little harder to blend. The gallery pastels are much more buttery and kind of lipsticky. These are perfect for kids, beginners, students, or if you're doing mixed media works where you need something for large color, big coverage. Uh, but you're not as worried about it being like higher end the way you're using it, if that makes sense. Kind of with, um, great for background of a larger scale work. This one I started and I had some of those big ones did the kind of underpainting, if you will. I guess it's still considered a painting because it goes over the whole thing. Yeah. But it's a drawing because it's pastels. Um, with the Mungio, um, the, the regular gallery, then I did the gallery um, extra soft on top. Now this is the great thing about these, if you get the, all right, so when I'm saying jumbo, Katie, can you show the other? That's the standard stick, that's the jumbo stick. So you can understand why I want to use this black versus this black 
there's a lot more coverage on something that large. It's 30 by 30 inches, so this would have been a whole lot of these little sticks. It would have been a lot. <laughs> so, but now in talking about wax bloom, you can see with this color right here, see how cloudy it is? That's that stearic acid coming to the top and becoming opaque. But you can see that that rubs off. It's just going to continue to do that until I buff it and then put that coating on. Yes. Somebody asked if it was like chocolate bloom, and I didn't even know what that was. Uh, I, I don't it. know the chemical. I, is it it's, is no, it's the, stearic acid and chocolate? No, it's something else that comes out of it. it it's uh, when it starts with chocolate does it when it start, heats up and then melts a little bit and the chocolate and milk chocolate typically tends to separate and come out and look just like that but you can't wipe it off right it's much more delicious to get rid of the chocolate problem than your yeah oil it still tastes the same just mm -hmm. same if you anyone has a problem with that i can solve that chocolate issue yeah. for them i guess i could start chocolate uh, okay i can't get these in back in there so i'm gonna set them over here <laughs> All right. Um, now, uh, and the also with with these, with the gallery standard, and these are perfect for kids, especially my kids use these even as big adult kids, or soon to be adult kids. They have boxes of six sets of for open stock to replace them. Sets of 12, 24, 36, 48, and seventy two. But what's the seventy two box cost? You go to the Jerry's website. Jerry'sArtorama.com are code for today to find the prices in the sets and stuff on this is JL65. This is really reasonable. I, I can't even remember what the... 4689 For the whole... For the set of 72 wood box set. Okay, this for, for the gallery or for the extra soft? Because I think that's the extra soft. That's the gallery. This is just the gallery. So that's what that price is. Mm -hmm. Oh, because the gallery extra soft is on sale because I want to say that's about what that runs for the fancier one. That's not bad for the wood no, box too, for that though. Many colors. And that box with yes, it. Yes, for that many colors. All right. So now the jumbo sets, the great big fat ones, come in sets of 12, 24, or 36. They don't have every single one of those, and you can't get them in open stock. So that's kind of a sad thing about that. All right. So we'll, we'll get to this gallery one in a minute. We'll talk about the um, Ferengi R Spire. Woo! Oh, we'll look at that. Right out of the box. Sorry. Magic balloon. I know. It's, it's, it comes like this with this little strap. I took the strap out and put it on. Um, all right. So the Ferengi Art Aspire oil pastels, um, they're a professional color palette. So these are actually named after real colors. So it's not just like sky blue or this or that. It's actually, you know, more along the lines of painting colors. These I noticed when I was working with them um, last night actually have the pigments on them, which that's always a good sign of quality is that it's got the pigment numbers on there. So if you're a painter, you know what the color is when you pick them up. Um, they will not dust, crumble, or break. Perfect for travel, especially with this little set. These are tin lined with these little drawers. Katie, can you? So, I mean, look. Can you see the little? Oh, there you go. It's tin lined, so it's going to be really easy to clean out if they start getting goopy. And they I mean, will get goopy. They're not as bad as, they're not as uh, wet as the Sennelier. They're, they're a drier pastel. Um, you can extend them with solvent or linseed oil, they say. Um, the colors are actually have light fastness ratings on them as well as the pigments, which I was very impressed by. That's pretty cool. 90 colors with a clear um, extender stick that looks like this. And this set actually comes with two of the extender sticks. Um, they're all AP non-toxic. And they've got open box sets of, like if you're gonna buy a color, say you're buying the black, you buy them in boxes of 12. The sets come in 25, 50, 
And then this wood box set of 92, and what are those on sale for right now? 79.99. 79.99 for 92 pastels in a wood travel Dang. set. Yeah. Because open stock is, is much more expensive than that. And, you know, this would be perfect because, like I said, you can get through airport security with that fine. You can fit that in Plain the air yeah. painting. I can Just fit that in my easel. purse. Yes. Yes. So, um, so now we did, let's see. Okay. So I did play, I've never used this brand other than the blacks. I've bought a bunch of blacks. Um, to go with some other stuff just to try different colors. I always buy a color that I'm going to use a lot of. So this was kind of dueling with it last night. Um, Katie and I were looking at it. We did notice that it was drier. This is mixed without solvent. I actually used the clear extender. Okay, let's show how that works. As long as we're... Some of the brands have the clear sticks. Some of them don't. These are drier, and I think that's why they've got that clear stick. Anytime you're working with oil pastels, you want a rag with you to kind of wipe. You can see there's some color residue left on here from last night. You just want to wipe that off. Okay, so th these were blended with color to color. This is going to be with this. See how much darker and richer you can see the color blends that I put in between. Now I'm going into another color, so I'd want to wipe that off. See how nice that clear extender stick is? Now you can, we're messing with it. Usually oil pastels, because I'm used to using Sennelier and the Mungio, blend better than that with a finger. That's, it's, you can tell that's drier, but we used a brush to try it. See how you can really move the pigment more kind of with that flatter brush. Kind of wipe the excess of that color out before I start into another one. So see, that's, even though that's drier than the ones that I tend to use, I was pretty impressed by it. And it's just knowing, okay, this is different than Sennelier's. This is a little bit different than the Mungio Extra Soft. Knowing how that performs to kind of know how I would want to choose to use it in an artwork. Um, so that's done completely with that, with these Art Aspire. I'm going to close this back up. All right, so there's that. Uh, now the Mungio Extra Soft, which is their um, higher end line of the two. Um, they're, it's, they say, made from the finest oil and wax binders, high quality pigments, highly light, fast, and permanent, super creamy and smooth. They are very creamy and smooth. Not all the way to Sennelier, but they're still pretty juicy. Um, Easy to blend with, with stomps, with your fingers, with the brushes. Um, they say thin with solvent or linseed oil. Range of 72 colors, so it's not as many colors as the brand that we just looked at. Um, these come available in open stock boxes of six, sets of 12, 24, 36, 48, and the wood box set of 72, which we're going to look at. Um, they also do, in their line, they've got fluorescence. This is just the box of fluorescence. And they've got metallics. In their metallics, they do boxes. The, they do um, two of each of the colors. And there are not fluorescence or metallics in this big box set. So... That is just all their colors. You can see with this slight wax bloom, but not, look at this color, because this is not near as bad as the um, regular gallery. Now, the one thing I will say about the Mungio line, and, and it's just having used other colors, and the Rengi has some really nice darks. It's just like soft pastels. Soft pastels, you rarely have really super, super dark pigments. It's only in the super expensive lines because when you've got a soft pastel, that whole thing is pigment. There's, there's a lot less clay and a lot less chalk in with it to make it those lighter colors. It's the same with the oil pastels. Although I really like the way that these are used, and this is pretty, I mean, you can see a lot of those colors in here, the violets and all that. 
it would have been nice to have some other really dark colors or a much much deeper i guess deeper would be the way to say it. really much deeper reds much deeper greens um a better variety of deeper colors but that's also me and how i work so and it's not always applied to kind of everybody else but just if you like to use really darker deeper tones this brand is great for some of the work you may have to look at getting alternate colors from another brand um so and this one was like i said done with the the bigger areas done with that gallery and then these done with the extra soft kind of on top of that. All right, so that's the Mungio. Now, we are going to go to the Sennelier, which are the ones that we said were done for Picasso. Um, oil pastels can be used on virtually any substrate, and that's why Picasso loved them, because you could draw on metal, you can draw on glass. You can draw on um, paper, on cardboard, on, on canvas, whatever, it's going to adhere to it. Uh, with these pastels that they do, they are the same high quality pigments they have in the, their other lines, meaning if you pick up a color and it's their cobalt blue, it's the same pigment that's used in their oils. It's the same pigment that's used in their soft pastels. It's the same pigment that's used in their watercolors. These guys, obviously, because they're a high-end fine art company, are going to have that quality built into them. Um, so if you're a painter, you're going to expect the same colors that you're used to. Their darks are super dark. You can see in this, there are dark darks. Um, this is just my little box that I have of my own. Um, they're acid-free. There's no need to prime the substrate. It seems like lower end ones that I've used, you can see some discoloration around a, a substrate. With these, I've never had that issue, but I tend to work on prime stuff anyway, just because I feel like it doesn't use as much of, this, of the pastel. Um, the oil paper is really nice for that. I use that, that's linen. Um, so it, it, I use them on just that kind of stuff normally anyway. Their binder is a pure synthetic binder, and then they have the pigment, and then they have the mineral wax is what they use. Um, they make the traditional size sticks. You're gonna hear angels in just a minute. It might be me making that sound for you, but you get the idea. All right, Katie, you gotta, you gotta zoom in. Amanda, roll your eyes at me. <laughs> Frida, Frida's Frida getting some clips. I love wah, wah. Mm. Look at those. That is the Legrand. Le this Put it is, next to the... Yeah. Okay, here. Let's do this. Not the same color, but you get the idea. Yeah. You can cover some serious... Don't so, forget to tell them about the giant in white and black. Oh, yeah. That's that's what almost double the stick is the Legrand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the size of a silver half dollar. Yeah. For yeah, real. so it's just like a, yeah. a great big giant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so they, they do, they don't now, they don't do this in the entire line, but they do it in, let's see how many colors. Um, there's a range of 120 colors. Number one to start out, it includes iridescence, metallics, and fluorescence. The open stock boxes are boxes of five for the standard boxes of three for the grande. Um, the set sets of six, 12, 24, 36, and 48 in the standard wood box sets of 24, 50, which is the Picasso colors, and 120 in the standard. And then the wood box set of 36 for the Grande. Don't cry, Frida. It's, it's, a, beautiful, it's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so that that is that. Now, things that I pulled uh, to show, they make a great perfect little starter set to get acquainted. It's a trial set. What is the test pack price? Can you check that for me? Um, comes in a tin. Mm -hmm. They do this for the oil pastels and the oil sticks. They do it for watercolors and other things they too. They, I love their little test packs. They're usually a very good value, uh, but it's a way to try it and see if you like it and to see maybe you use a different brand now. <laughs> 5.95. 5.95. So it's cheaper than if you bought them single in the store with a nice tin that then you can take the foam out and put pastels in. 
So it's a way to try that brand and see what you think. Now they make a beautiful set of those metallics, which is very, uh, oh, excuse me, iridescent, but you get iridescent metallics. Those are gorgeous. Um, then if you wanted to treat yourself to something nice uh, and get, maybe get a few more, you're not ready for one of these, you know, with the bigger sets, they have these beautiful little, little box sets that are kind of these get acquainted sets that are very reasonable or a great gift for someone. Now, that's so cute. Thinking, there's a pencil and a rag. What do you need a rag for in there? It, can you see this? What I've gotten on me just opening boxes so far. And like I said, you, you need to wipe that pastel when you use it. Look at that pretty little set. Look how dark those darks are. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. If you. this was lettering, Amanda would be drooling, no, but I'm she's just, just like, oh my God. Amy. Your middle name should be I've Made a Mess. <laughs> Amy, I've made a mess. I'm like, Dean. my youngest child and I are both very alike. We're like, if you were a Charlie Brown character, you'd be pig pen. Yeah. That's, that's me. Yeah. But that's a nice, a very nice little thing. So, so there's a way to kind of get into it. Or if you know somebody that's interested in oil pastels, that's only used the student grade ones. That's a great little lovely present. Okay, so there's the Sennelier, and the Sennelier, Frida, you, the little dog that you did, that was with just a starter set before they did the, um, the tin. It's so cute. So can you see that okay on there? That's Mason. And that was your first oil pastel, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Yep. So that was Frida's first oil Took pastel of the dog. three hours? Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's fantastic. Um, a very good indicator of kind of how those work and then I, then this was if you watched our figure fourth episode you've seen it if you haven't you should watch it because we have you can see amanda for the first time live not live but pre-taped yeah but as far as amanda's ever gonna let you see her possibly <laughs> uh this is a frida and frida sat for it the underpainting just under drawing was the monkey extra soft but the rest of it on top is the Sennelier. So, um, and you can see it's a little bit shiny. That's the spray that it's hardened and protecting it. Um, does so, the spray come in different sheens? No. Just the one? It does not because you need the resin. So, so it needs to be a, a little bit shinier. All right. Now, the last brand we've got to look at is, is the Karen Nash. Now this box looks like it's been through the mill because it was at my house. And because I'm messy. No. Yeah. You should get a t-shirt that says pig pen on the back. What? No. Just blame the dogs. Okay. No, it was, okay. So this is the, their Neo Pastel. Neo Pastel is their oil pastel. They've got other sticks, but they're, uh, they're either just wax or they're a water soluble wax crayon. Now this looks very used and we'll show you why after we talk about it. Superior quality oil pastels, they are definitely right on par with Sennelier as far as quality. They're a little bit drier when you use them. Still very nice and shiny. In fact, we should probably show a couple of these on paper real quick before we go to the oils. Um, soft velvety texture, excellent light fastness, rich luminous vibrant colors. They say dissolve it in white spirit, which is a petroleum, if you wanted to do that. If, if you're going to, you know, do, do washes, I would still use a, more of a, the, the lavender or something like that instead. They have nice dark darks. I was pleased with their darks. Uh, dust free, like I said, drier than most brands, a range of 96 colors. Open stock, you can get them in boxes of three of that color. Sets of 24, 48, 96. And they're cardboard boxes, but this is a really super high quality cardboard box with a padded lid they leave it to the swiss and you know nice engineering it's a it's a beautiful box now the reason this set is so used because while i was out on vacation the dogs were did something very cute and i took a picture of it that's all done completely with the karen dash because i felt like i needed since i've used the other brands i really needed to have a decent handle on what the differences were So, um, 
obviously I don't have a Brooklyn orange dog, but it was just, you know. Oh, it's Charlie and Waldo. To, yes. I miss little Charles. Goof, goofy pointer puppies. Um, so that's done exclusively with that. Good I, question. I really like it. Yes. If somebody wanted to use oil pastels in a mixed media work with acrylics, would the fixative work? I'm assuming the oil pastels would have to be the very last. You're going to want to put those in the very last layer. And then the issue that you're going to have is that your acrylics aren't going to be sealed. Either you're going to have to varnish those and then put the oil pastels over them and then use the fixative. And then if you go to have to re-varnish your acrylic, it's, it's going to be a problem. If you're doing something, I mean, it's plausible. It would just need to be the top layers. Yeah. Um, it just It just starts... Mixed media is mixed media is mixed media. Whether it's archival or not starts getting down to kind of the nitty gritty of the how, where, and why, and kind of what you're going to do to achieve that. So yes, they can be used over acrylics, the short answer. How do you make them archival? Yeah, that's that's something where you get, you're going to just sit down and make up a chart and a flow chart, and if X happens and the moon is in the house of this, and you know, there's a tornado on the West Coast and weigh all those options. And Amy is clean. Yeah. <laughs> Which is never going to happen. <laughs> um, let's show what these look like just so you can see the dryness and the softness. They can see it real quick and then we'll go to the, um, I think, do you want to, do you think canvas or paper would be better to show that on Katie? Which ones? The oil pastels. So I'm just going to show the, the, um, the types real quick. Maybe the paper. Okay. Because it shows oh, well, i happen to have some right here it just was showing the okay. the yeah, yeah. dryness of them a little bit better yes. than i think the canvas okay. would don't you yes all right now okay the, the uh these are actually the gallery themselves but let's get the other we'll, we'll grab the giant one i'm assuming the fluorescents in that are not they're the gallery okay. archival though um it's are they? It's not that they're not archival, because it's, it's well, just that the wax fugitive. is going to be the, it, you know, the fluorescence well, these, in yes, it. fluorescents are going to be fugitive. Okay, but, but look, that's pretty smooth. I wasn't ready. That's okay. Sorry. It lays down pretty soft and smooth. So that's the Mungio Gallery. Not bad. Uh, let's pick a, ooh, this is pretty. I'm sad that. I can hear that. that orange is, is not coming through the camera. It's yeah, not? It's, it's, it's punchy in the face uh, traffic cone orange. Okay, so that's the gallery. For a student grade, that is very, still very moist. Yeah. I think. Um, let's see when you take a, a color and blend them in together. Yeah. So, I mean, decent blendability. Not. For, for more of a student grade entry level, very well, nice. purple and orange are okay, not pretty let's, together. Let's see how shiny the, the metallics are, because I'm not using their metallics. Okay, the, now this is the, ooh, that's nice. Patty. The, I know. You can pass that this way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's that's the extra side that is that really wears down much faster. Um, let's try, ooh, there's a really pretty okay look at that that's nice that's much softer that's mu it's not quite full lipstick soft but it's still a very nice softness now all right so let's move these now the uh our aspire something that's a little darker see that's drier it doesn't blend right into the paper as easy. Can you see that? Can you do it? Do we okay. need one of those lights? To... No, no, you can see it. It just is further see, it's, away. It's drier. It's still velvety, but it's just a little bit drier application. In some ways, I like this. This is a little bit easier to control. Mm -hmm. This starts, the edges can get away with you from you if you're not using it quite. Let's grab another. Right. Ooh, this is pretty green. Let's put the green with the purple. That is not quite as soft. So that's the artist wire. All right. 
Now the, uh, and for those of you that are waiting with bated breath for those oil sticks, we're almost there. And there's less brands of that, so. Notice I did put some wipes over here because I knew I'd get something on me eventually, Amanda. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, so here's just the regular gallery, uh, extra soft. That's about actually the same uh, firmness as the, yeah. the Art Aspire. So I've not used this on that paper. I've used it on canvas. And I may have had a few glasses of wine when I did that painting. So it might not have been as soft as I realized. Liquid inspiration. Just saying, yes. That's the, that's the only way I have ever used oil. I would never have gotten the oil passed out, out otherwise. Because they get on me. Right. Yeah. Don't laugh. I woke up and was like, I arted. Look, what happened? <laughs> Let's go find out. Okay. You see that whole hazmat suit and then you're good. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here's the Neo Pastels. By comparison, let's go with. Oh, yeah. That's much softer. Ooh. That's much softer. I could hear the rest of these. I can't even yes. hear that one. Well, and the stick's starting to bend because, it, because it's a softer stick. And I was putting pressure on it mm -hmm. like that. Let's get a little bit lighter color. That's Oop. <gasps> ah! it's okay. Don't worry. But look at that. And this one keep mixing really the purple nice. and the orange. Wait, it made a pretty brown. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just what? like regular. Yep. All right, so then the Sennelier, we're going to use my set since that's open. I don't want to. I want to see these. Oh, we'll use this too. Oh, it got closed. Did you do that or did I do that automatically? You did it. Did it. Okay, we, yes, I know the copper. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's copper, Oh, uh, Okay, Sennelier, look at that. Oh, you can't listen to the sound. You can barely hear it. Yeah, I want to try the that silver looks really pretty look at that how rich that is the mica is much smaller particles than the uh, Mugio all right and then it wouldn't be uh, show the is this the cobalt I need my reading glasses first nope that's got this is probably it Yes, because I've used it. All right. Kids don't do this at home without your gloves. Okay, that is just so velvety and liquidy. All right, there's a teal, Katie. I'll do it for you. Yeah. It's not been used yet. Also, while you're doing that, yeah. my little fairy brain forgot the answer that if you can use oil pastel and oil paint. Uh, you can, but they've got to be used on top, and you want that oil paint to have already oxidized, right? So that it's not going to try to dry through That's this. Because these don't dry. There's people that do their underpaintings in this, but then it's not drying. And then that is your, um, that that is your, your first coat, right? So that would be like... segue to oil bars. Yes, that would be like <sighs> taking something, you know, oily covering yourself in it and then expecting to put something solid on and keep it from slipping and sliding around, right? Not a good foundation to have for your first coat. So, all right. So, you can see. Much, it gets progressively smoother. Progressively. They're so buttery, I just want to like go I know. Well, look how easy this is to blend, right? You can blend it into the paper over here where there wasn't even any color just by pulling it over. That's how soft that is now. Here's the Karen Dash, right? Oh, wait. It's harder to do that. You can see some of the edge, but it's not going quite as far, right? Let's see if I got a clean finger. All right. So then this was the, those were the Monkey O Extra Soft, right? Mm -hmm. So those are about the same kind of, they laid down a little bit differently. That's the Extra Soft. Was that the Art Aspire? Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Art Aspire. So it's a little bit drier than that. Here's the... Yes, because those are the ones you're saying they were real similar. Yes. You see that? 
blends about those three blends similarly this you can feel it drag and slide a little bit further you're gonna do this um the, yes those are the student grade see how that's not really if anything it's like picking the color up and not Mm -hmm. taking it anywhere because it's because they don't have as much pigmentation there's right. more filler wax which there's nothing wrong with that as long as you're aware of that and you understand the abilities that it has and the abilities it doesn't so all right so those are just got a plan for it yes just like the schoolhouse rock the more you know do -do -do -do. yeah do -do -do -do. all right so oil sticks, while I'm cleaning, cleaning my hands. Any any questions about oil pastels before we move our little elves along? Any questions? No? Yes? No? Mm -hmm. It may take a second. There's okay. a delay fine. today for some reason. All right. So oil sticks, also known as oil bars. Um, that was actually the trade name for Windsor Newton. Um, so that's what some people are familiar with. It is oil paint in a solid form. It is made with compressing wax and oil with pigment until it forms a stick. Um, it's the same pigments and drying oils used in traditional oil paint, uh, especially in the, the higher end ones. That's what you're gonna find. Um, it can be compressed poured sticks or it can be poured and then rolled into a crayon form. Um, now, this is the different part between the two. When you pick up the sticks, you're going to notice, and you use them for the first time, people would call and be like, my oil stick's not working. It's just leaving this dry, weird thing. I don't know. They have a skin. Gonna, gonna be honest with you right here. It's a little gross to pull off. Huh? It's, yeah, it's gross. It's like, you know how when you're a kid and you eat pudding in the cafeteria at school, oh. and it's got that... What are you doing these... Because oh, that's the analogy, analogy is and I'd rather them hear it here than buy it and then be creeped out if they get creepy like that. They do it's get a pudding fine. skin. It I'll is. give you, I mean, they work, it's like but they're just... It's like pudding skin, but no. you gotta peel it off. It's like when you get sunburned. Uh, that's thicker. The skin. No, at first... The, when that's you more first, satisfying. When you, when you pull the skin off of this at first, it's way thicker than just that's sunburned true. skin. It's like a put, like homemade pudding skin. I don't need any more of this. <laughs> yeah. Sorry doing what we can to creep Amanda out because that's always fun. Um, the skin protects that stick and keeps the rest of it from oxidizing, okay? So after you use it and then set it aside, it's perfectly natural. You're gonna have to peel that back off or wipe it back off. Um, the oil paint sticks, they will oxidize and dry oils. The biggest issue is some of the brands use more oil, some use less oil you're not going to have the exact same dry time between this the brands um some of them are kind of wetter and juicier which is awesome if that's what you want some of them are drier so we're going to look at these and we're going to talk about them um the oil stick uses perfect for under drawings when starting oil paintings if i was going to do some big giant oil paintings that would be the way to lay out a drawing because man it's like it's like drawing with a stick of butter that sings to your soul. I don't know my I thought she was going to grossed out. Like, no. so she's not grossed out by drawing with a stick of butter, but you can get some skin. beautiful, uh, really okay. dynamic. Just, really... Well, it just it would be really cool to even just use them yeah. to draw with. So, uh, yes, Amanda. Uh, so it's hot outside. Yes. If I order a pudding skin stick, <laughs> is it going to melt on the way to my house? Um, I wouldn't leave them outside. I wouldn't leave them outside if you're in like, yes, Frida. When I worked in customer service, we had a giant set of the Sennelier oil sticks returned for that very reason. Okay. They will melt. Okay. So this might be something where if you're wanting to order them and it's 114 because you're in California, Victor, I'm looking at you because I, I know you and you and your heat and ordering things to get Well, if they're going to sit outside in the sun. You might want to wait until it's a cooler week to kind of order it and plan um, accordingly. Same same thing for you acrylic painters. Don't order acrylic paints in the dead of winter when it's 40 below zero. You live in Wyoming and there's snowstorms snowing mm -hmm. in your UPS trucks for two weeks. The same thing. Just be aware of that. And that's a great question. 
Good, good question. Heat will affect these. Uh, because you'll see when we go to use them, we first put it down, it's buttery and slick, but that little bit of momentum and the friction will make the putting butter on a hot pan and where you can do that and the butter just kind of off of it. It does the same thing with, with the oil paint. Um, you can thin these with solvents um, or drying oils for washes to make them more brushable. You could dip your brush in solvent, use the stick almost like, you know, a pan for watercolors and pull the color right off, off and paint with it that way. Uh, I did that actually when I used these at home and was like, look at all the things you can do with them. Look at this. I was very, I was very excited. I know. Yeah. I'm very excited. That was exactly what I was thinking when I said that to you, Katie. Um, look what I can do. Um, you can use them straight from the stick with the brush. You can actually take a palette knife and mix these together. Katie, should you think we should show that in a little bit when we use them? Yeah. I watched the R an RNF video and I was like, what can you do? Look at this. With these notes, there's two links. One is uh, a Sennelier link to their website using their oil sticks. And the other one is to RNF's website. The RNF guy, I just wanted to paint for forever. Yeah. And just not talk, just paint. Just paint, just paint for me. It was very, just like beautiful to watch him. And he was doing a big abstract, which I'm not, you know, you John, but it was in how that paint went down. Um, the oil stick issues that you're gonna have, it's a longer dry time than your traditional oils. But like I said, it depends on the manufacturer. Um, it's less refined. It's not like you can take a, you know, size two round and get this beautiful tiny little line. If you're using that oil stick, you might be able to turn it on its edge and get a little bit, but once that momentum and the friction gets started from pulling it across, it's not going to be like a little teeny HB pencil line. So that's something to consider. You're not going to get tight little detail with these. Um, but other than that, I'll say that they're pretty exciting and we will show some we got free to do some examples yeah. for us, and then I did one. So you can get some amazing like energy in the painting. With oh those no, it's it's just it's very dynamic yeah. and very gestural. Um, the Richardson Shiva Artist Oil Paint Sticks. If you were familiar with the Shiva oils back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, Richardson Jack Richardson bought them out. Um, Shiva is their brand now. They make oil sticks. They're they call them their oil paint sticks. Um, they use refined linseed oil and pigment. You can use them with solvents or mediums, they say. Now their brand is the only one that says this, most colors dry to the touch within 24 hours. You found, I mean, you did that shirt when? Last night. So it's almost dry to the touch. Um, we'll look at this again in just a minute, but Frida did this on fabric last night and it's almost completely dry to the touch now. Um, the colors are permanent when dry most of their colors are AP non-toxic. Uh, they have a colorless blender stick. So it's actually just the oil and the wax in the stick itself. So you can actually use that like you saw with the oil pastels. A range of 51 professional colors. There are 12 student colors. I'm not sure what that means. That seems like a strange thing to say for oil sticks. I'm not like sure what those are. I don't know, but, but trying to find any information about that beyond that I, I don't know I would assume it means hues um, and 16 iridescent colors uh, they have open stock sticks you can get them in sets of <laughs> these adorable little mini sticks remember the old lipstick samples <laughs> it's like those they're so cute um, and they make like three autumn colors three this three that these are three of their metallic colors you're already eyeing these, aren't you? But it is oil paint. Just mm -hmm. but it has a skin. It, it does. Okay. Yeah, they, 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 yeah, it smells like like linseed oil. Um, they have sets of twelve full sticks like these. Now, this is the one beef I have with them. Don't call these professional oil sticks and pack them like they're a cut of meat. Styrofoam. Why? I mean, I understand it's it's lighter for shipping and all that. I I just don't like that it's styrofoam. And the minute Amy opens this up, I don't know how it's not already been broken. 
because Amy breaks everything. But these are their, you can see the these, and then Katie, can you zoom in on these to show the, it's their like five assorted more traditional colors. And then these, this is their traditional color set. So that was put on just a little bit ago. So that's a nice range of it being put right on canvas. So just like oil paint, you get some that are going to be semi-transparent. You get some that are opaque. It's going to work the same. Um, and they, they do have a much stronger smell than some of the other brands. You're right, Frida. So that is the Shiva. Now they've got a fabric uh, paint sticks starter kit. Now Frida used this for the shirt and then she did this little bag with these as well. Can you show this, Katie? It's a little zippered bag that she did with her initial on it. Did you have something that you did the F with? Did you just put like Asking a- Asking to. Okay. Oh, awesome. It's just so crafty. <laughs> uh, masking tape, then she just drew on it with these colors that are the um, iridescents that come with the set. It's got little, little brushes with it. There's copper. Yes, there's copper. And then they also have some rubbing plates and we'll talk about this and show the shirt in a minute. So just made this cool little bag. Already, she did it last night. And I haven't heat set it yet. She hasn't heat set it. So yeah, and it's not it's not super dry, but it's also not super humid here. It's so that's pretty awesome. Um, now let me put this over here so I don't get this all over me somehow. By Christmas miracle. Um, the rubbing plates. Now, these rubbing plates we've shown on Sharon's when we did the episode with Sharon at her house with um, collage. The rubbing plates are just these really cool plates. I'm trying to see if I can find the one you used. <clears throat> okay, see how it's a leaf, Katie? Can you see? It's, it's got a positive on one side. It's got, it's like Let's a maple leaf. Yeah. And then it's got the negative yeah. on the other side. So you can use either side that you want to use. And you just use them like, remember when you're a kid and they take you to, to Back in the day, before television, Amanda, they took us to the graveyard and you got crayons and you had the paper and you did the tombstone rubbing. We did that. Okay. Well, I just figured, see. We did it um, at Oakwood because it was history yeah. and art. Yeah, I used to have a fashion designer for that. I had that! <laughs> so, yes, yes. Uh, fashion plates, right? I had that. All right, so she used those rubbing plates with, so cool. with those um, paint sticks and did these cool oak leaves, the oak leaf template in there. How did you do the acorn? What did you use to put that down? I cut out a template, I drew a template and cut it out of uh, cardstock. So see, cardstock, then she and just it drew, drew it on with the sticks. Raleigh's the city of oaks, so she did that. Um, so it turned out to be a really, and it shows up so great on the black. It really does. It's really nice. I and I was saying this would be cool on jeans. A jean jacket? To use, yes. Or just even jeans down the leg or something, or on the cuffs. Or... Galaxy jeans. Galaxy jeans. <laughs> very on trend right now. So so that's that little set. How much is that set? It was very inexpensive. Um, so it'd be a way to like try oil pastels. 68.19. Huh? 68.90. Okay, so it'd be a way to try try oil sticks, but actually use it for something else if you don't like it for just using it as a regular oil stick. And the book had a bunch of different ideas. Oh, oh, awesome. Let's see. Is it soft? It looks soft. Mm -hmm. Well, it's oil paint, so it's going to be flexible, yeah. right? Yeah. No, it's very soft. You're going to be able yes. to wash that? Yes, when okay. it's heat set. Mm -hmm. You but can wash it when it's heat set. Yes. No dry cleaning. Okay. Yeah, well, I don't. Just saying. Don't dry clean your t-shirt. Don't go doing it on my wool, I guess. No, but if you're I, I doing, know. you know, a yeah. really nice tablecloth, yeah. for example. That's true. Yes, true. Okay. Okay, you must be from the land of it's something like other than vinyl tablecloths. It was in the book. <laughs> oh, okay. I was like, wow. 
Now he feels like, yeah, okay. All right, so Windsor Newton oil bars. Now, I'm gonna preface this with, before we did this episode, we already ordered the supplies and then the discontinuation notice came in. If you like Windsor Newton oil bars and you want to be part of the have oil bars to work with, you need to get them soon because Colart, the, um, the importer that's bringing them in is discontinuing oil bars in the US. They're the importer for Windsor Newton. Now, I don't know if that's Windsor Newton completely, but they're going to discontinue them as supplies wane mm -hmm. on the colors. So it may be a while, but if it's something where you're interested in this brand or have this brand and love this brand, you probably better stock up while you can, because otherwise you're gonna have to start looking at other brand options. Um, they used to be, and I think this is part of it, they used to be much stiffer. They're softer now. They had to reformulate them. So it may be that they just lost a lot of people because they weren't as soft and smooth. Or maybe they're going to reformulate them again. It, you never know. Uh, made of pure pigment, refined oils and waxes, dry to the touch. They say in two to seven days. Pigment and thickness dependent. I'm going to throw in atmospheric conditions as well in your area. Um, Compatible with tube oils, alkyds, solvents, mediums, varnishes, any traditional oil thing, it's gonna work with them. You can use them on canvas, board, and primed paper surfaces. With all these oil sticks, for the love of art supplies holy, make sure you're using it on stuff that has been primed to take oil because linseed oil is just like an oil paint. It is acidic, it will eat through things. Any drying oil is. So it needs to be primed to be used with traditional oils, just like in a regular paint, okay? Uh, there's a range of 50 colors in this line. They have uh, a colorless blender as well. Um, open stock sticks and sets of six, which are five colors and the clear blender. Now I left the skin on the clear blender so we could show it being... Great. What well, they need to know how... Yes. I mean, it's like putting in a stick. We should come make Amanda do it. That would be fun. Oh, like Gogurt. <laughs> oh, no. All right. So can you come here? I left this right on there so they can kind of see. Amanda, this is for you. Love you. Uh-huh. All right. See, this is hard. Nothing's coming up. Now you've got to actually take it. You can use a rag or... Something else. See the skin? Oh, now, I this is actually much thinner than some of the other ones were. Let me get in on that. That actually does look like when you have some. <laughs> I it found does. It's easier to take a hobby knife and just cut all the way around and then use a rag to pull oh, it yeah. off. That would work. But you can just peel it up too. Now, I'm doing this with my hands because it's not. See how I just pulled that off? So now it's just the wax in the oil, right? You know, with the pigment, some of them, the skin is a lot thicker. Um, as long as I've got this open, you can see the skin on the white really easy. See how it's oh, how it's more yellow from the linseed? Can you see from there to yeah. there? So because of science, do you have to see? peel off the skin every time? Like you do, you do because it's not going to come off or it's going to leave chunks of skin on your artwork and then you're going to have to pull them off. So you want to Give them a wipe before you go ahead and use them. Does it reform? <laughs> yes, it reforms because it's it. What what this is is just Oxidization. like when you well, when you put a lot of paint on your palette, big globs of paint. Yeah. How it gets that skin over the top, and you kind of lift it with your brush to get in at the good stuff. It's, it's literally pudding thing. skin. It, it is only paint. You don't want to eat. It. Don't eat it. No. Not only would it taste bad, it's it might kill you. Bad for you. All right. So that is the Windsor Newton oil bar. Um, they were a little bit drier and not as, not as... We just had a couple nice people shiny. commenting saying that when they reformulated them, they made them drier. Oh, they did make them drier. Mm -hmm. More like an oil pastel, because less they said like that an oil they were, stick. they said they were a softer stick texture now. So were they squishier before? Wasn't somebody just saying that on... Saying they added more beeswax and they came too stiff like more like an oil pastel oh now they are mm -hmm. oh wow okay yeah because they were much stiffer um i really had to once i really scrubbed it heated up and then it the color came off easier but at first i was a little surprised by i didn't know if it was like older so that's definitely the issue then okay 
So that was that that I just did just a little bit ago. So that was the Windsor Newton. All right. Then. RNF pigment sticks made in the U.S. These are like butter. They are finely milled pigments, natural waxes. They use beeswax and plant wax. Not sure what that. No, it's not your wax because they said plant. Soy. And probably it probably is like a soil wax. Mm -hmm. um, An alkali refined linseed oil, handmade in small batches to carefully mill and mold. They their website is like Gamblin. It is a font of knowledge. You can learn so much from their articles on there. They're serious about the quality of these things. If they're making it and they're crap, they like they're not exactly what they think it should be. They scrap the whole bunch. So uh, it's something where that if you're interested in these and you'd like to learn more about them, peruse their website. It's fantastic. Um, soft lipstick, creamy consistency. It is like high end, fancy, fancy yeah. lipstick. Uh, to a softer consistency with a palette knife. Literally, when I was wiping the wax off one of them, like a big glob of the paint came, like the loose much of the end was like, ah, it was just that soft. I was not expecting that. Uh, no additives, no extenders, no fillers, no substitutes. You can use them with traditional oils and in caustics. Thins with solvents and mediums. Two blending sticks. They make one that has dryer in it and one that does not and they also make them in jars where if you're going to be using these with a palette knife you can also scoop the uh the color jars to add them um, to it um, they have two blending stick sizes 38 milliliter and a 188 milliliter and then the pigment stick sizes are 38 milliliter and 100 milliliter so you can get a much bigger blending stick to blend your blending needs 94 colors can i just say that's fantastic i know that's that's saying quality right there and I, and that video is on the notes because it's like just and he uses it in ways where because because the oil sticks start getting the other colors on them if you're using a lot of them and painting them thick he like pushes them and picks it up and turns it and like uses the clean i was like what huh, do it again fascinating Ooh. it was I bet. <clears throat> they have the mini set to try of these little half sticks. They're not the most fantastic colors, but I mean, it's, you know, a way to try it. And it would be kind of a nice neutrals. Good for underpainting, yeah. Yeah, well, it'd be, it's kind of almost like a nice um, chiaroscuro mm -hmm. in a way. Um, they, this, this set is just their painter's dozen set. It's a very strange assortment of colors. Once I started looking at them, I was like, oh, that's beautiful. But it seemed like a very odd assortment of colors. But they're so bright. They're so oh bright. Oh my God. And just, they couldn't be juicier. Just like ridiculously juicy. Isn't that beautiful? They're gonna be super wet. I just put them on. And these are the ones that take the longest to dry that I found. Katie, do you regret? They're <laughs> Katie, Katie just globbed herself. Now the cool thing is instantly this, this turkey umber greenish was really black when I first put it on, and it's lightened up a lot. And the indigo was super black initially, but now that it's out of the tube and on there, yeah, the color is much lighter than it was. Like I think I was over there, and now that I'm under more of the true color lights, so I was like, "Woo, look at that!" Um, it's the excitement so that's from the that set, I know. And then there's this metallic They're beautiful. Set. What in the world? Come for a little bit. Well, I think I've got the, uh, no need to look at those. Look at that. Now, the cool thing about these sets are like gambling. Their packaging is fantastic and that it's recyclable in a panel, a cradled hardboard panel. That's very much like a gesso board. <gasps> Stop! <gasps> no. Okay. Sorry. We're gonna, I... we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Gesso board, cradled sticks. It's so you can use the ampersand. That's it. Actually, it's yeah. an ampersand, isn't it? Uh, sounds like ampersand. Let's see what the. Yep. Yeah. 
Ampersand, just a board. They do their encaustic sets the same way where they have them. The yes, paints in the encaustic the boards. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So it's it's handy. You know, this set has them. All their little sets that are a full stick have these. So you have a painting substrate to open it up and enjoy mm -hmm. it away. That's so clever. It's fantastic. I love that. Uh, so those are these. And it's greener. Now, it is very green. Now I've got uh, trying to find places to put things. I'm going to put it here in case we want to look at it. In my bag. Take this one. In your <laughs> bag. <laughs> yeah. Um, this, I'm going to have to hold it up because the part that's. Okay, so on my staycation, I just art it for a week. The part down here on the bottom is all done with the oils. I mean, it's the colors are done with Sennelier, the silver and the um, the iridescent, the light silver, and then a little bit of dark silver are done with those RNF sticks. Okay, but what about that gold? It's so the pretty gold familiar. is actually I tried a gold stick and then I didn't like it, so I wiped it off. That is the Pebio metallic. Okay sheets where you can do the gilding with the metallic sheets. It's a preview for an upcoming episode? Yes, it is a preview for an Spoiler upcoming alert. episode, but I just, I just, it wasn't quite gold enough for what it I wanted. It is gold enough now. No, it needed to it's be like beautiful. that kind of gold. It yeah. needed to be icon gold, and it wasn't... It was gold. It just... Wasn't the right And I probably right could have done multiple layers and um, and then um... Amanda's drooling over used, there. Used a medium to, to kind of wash them in, but Amanda, this painting is due somewhere on the 28th. So using no, those metallic sticks right wasn't going to be dry enough. So that no, was, sure. that was. It's beautiful. Out. So now the blues and the other colors are the Sennelier oil sticks. So, because you know who I like my Sennelier blue. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. So that is the RNF pigment sticks. All right. So now we'll go to the Snelly, since we we just transitioned into it with that. Um, what do you think yes. is the benefit of using oil sticks versus the oil paint? For me, it would be just the solvent. I can't use solvent, okay. but you don't run out of paint on your brush either, which I love. This is this is my weird take on the benefit. And this is coming from I, I had to have hand surgeries at 31 for both hands because I had carpal tunnel uh, from being a sculptor. So by default, I'm now a painter, which albeit I am not as good of a painter as a sculptor, that made it so I couldn't do that anymore because the nerve damage was so severe. I think they said the guy did the test and then came back and did it again and did it again. And he said that it was like a 90 year old man who'd worked in a factory his whole life. The just, it wasn't getting through the nerve it was like making my elbows jump and my fingers weren't moving. He was just electrocuting the tarnation out of me. It was horrible. So um, after that, there was no, no sculpture. Painting sometimes still, when we did the, if you saw our figure fourth episode, um, it was starting to hurt my hands and my elbows really badly and wrists with that much, like just because it was an entire week of we filmed something every day with doing that doing this and trying it over my break was kind of twofold. We had this episode coming up and I needed to try oil sticks. There is something so much more immediate about these oil sticks and how much more pigment you can mm -hmm. lay down with less effort than loading that brush over and over. I like had the under drawing drawn on and one of my college friends happened to come and she visited for about four days. I was just like, oh my God, look how far I am in this painting. It was just, it was that exciting to me as the fatigue wasn't so severe. I was able to keep working. It was like I was able to make immediate choices, immediate progress. Um, if something was like too heavy in one spot, I could take solvent on a rag, wipe it almost completely off. Um, it's just linen underneath. It's actually, I think, a sense of linen underneath. I just had, I wanted that weird shape and it was that. That was all I had in it, which normally wouldn't be my choice. I mean, I like it's I like it enough, but I usually would use an oil primed linen. Um, but it just the progress and how much I was able to get done very quickly was very nice. There's a lot of paint in those sticks too. A lot of pigment. We'll, we'll look at the Sennelier ones in just a second. So they're fun. Yes, 
but I mean, I was able to blend with the brush once it was already on there. And, but so much less, there was not one day that I worked on this other than doing the gold gilding where I was like, my arm hurts really bad. I need to stop. I need a break. So that's, that's a huge plus for me. I really love oil pastels. This is like going to be the new thing for me. The total new thing. It was just that, that awesome and that helpful to me, for, especially for larger scale like that because this is, I think, one of the largest things I've worked on. So, all right. So that's that's what I think, for me, that was what, what the biggest difference was. So, um, so it's an LA. Let's go to them. Again, the little starter pack. Frida, can you find out what the oil stick price is? Because it may be a little bit more. Sennelier uses pure concentrated pigment, safflower oil, and neutral mineral wax for their oil painting sticks. Still $15.99? $9.95. Okay, now, these are oil sticks, but these are baby, little baby oil sticks. I love their kids. But look at how adorable they are. Okay, but look at, look at the big daddy ones. Holy cow. So these, this is a way to try these oil sticks <laughs> with a, with Getting your oil stick, but without it being the big giant one. But you've got, I know, a perfect, but it's like a perfect little replica yeah. of, it's like it's a, a matchbox mini. car version of the, of these giant oil sticks. Cause I mean, these things are huge. Yeah. That is a lot of paint right there. A lot of pigment. Um, so that's a way to try these and see if it's, you know, up your alley, or even if you just want a few to, to do some underdrawing with, or. Oops, I just These are the ones you the used for your... Uh, yes. That's I, I all did, you went through? No, no, I did, yeah. Yes, it is all. For that big old... And I, did, and I did a color swatch thing here, Katie. Where's my... That's pretty impressive. Look, that's that entire set. Here, I'll put it like this, that'll be easier. That's the entire set. There's a pearl, which I did use the pearl over the silver to kind of make the pearl on the artwork a little brighter. Um, that is the entire set of 36. And now my notes are underneath. Let me find my notes. <laughs> Pull this out. They do a clear blender stick. You can use them alone or with traditional oil paints. Dilute with solvents, oil mediums, drying oils. With this, the surface film on some of these, now this is a big set, so I don't think we sell them as readily as we would the individual sticks. The film was a little thicker on some of them, um, but it didn't form back very quickly over it, which I expected, because I used them earlier in this last week, I expected the film to already be on them. I barely had to wipe them and it came right off. The dry time on these, they say two to five days atmospheric dependent condition and thickness that you put it on. I think the last oil stick portion that I used on that was probably Wednesday of this last week. It's all completely dry to the touch now. Um, so that's fantastic. These, they say store for extended periods of time. That skin develops over it and it keeps them good and safe. Just keep it, you know, out of a heat, heat hot area. Uh, a range of 55 colors. There's three series in the range that they've got. The little six mini stick test pack, 24 half sticks set in a wood box. You can get a set of just six full size sticks or the big wood Mac Daddy 36 color set. So, um, and I've got on um, the show notes that I'm going to post in the live group on Facebook, there is a video with an artist uh, named Joe Pinelli with Sennelier. It's in French, but there's subtitles. So that's nice uh, of him using those to do an artwork. And he talks about kind of how he uses those. The oil sticks. Yes. Those should be compatible with oil and cold wax medium. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Entirely. Absolutely. Um, and what, what I kind of put in on the notes as far as um, what would be helpful for these. We've got brushes that would work for either one. With, obviously, if you're an oil painter and you've got these oil mediums, 
you can use oil brushes with them, with the oil sticks. I've also used regular traditional oil brushes with solvent, with the um, oil pastels, with very high success uh, with the lavender, um, the Chelsea lavender essence. I use that all the time. Now, they make, we used the one little brush, I'm not sure where it wandered off to. Oh, here it is. Pastel smoothie brushes. These are designed for your traditional dry, just your soft pastels, but they will work with these too. The stiffer brush uh, with the bore bristle works great with these without any solvent. The soft one works great with the solvent. Just kind of smooths in and you can actually make some more like washes with the oil pastels. And then silver brush makes these three little cute stubby things. Which Nubbies. is kind of nice because it's almost like a stenciling brush. You can really, to me, I like that length. But with those, it's nice if you work with it elevated or on an easel, you've got the length of the brush to stand a little further back. So any of those work really well for the oil bars or the oil sticks or your oil pastels. And those are included with the fabric set as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think you had a set of four in that, yep. maybe. Yeah. Um, this cube is fantastic because everything that's in this can be used with your oil pastels. Almost everything that's in it can be used with your oil, or, or excuse me, oil sticks and oil pastels. Some of the manufacturers say you can use those drying oils. There's walnut oil in this. There's also um, just the linseed oil. You can use those with this. You can use you want. I don't know if I would mix the drying oils with it, but I'm just weird like that because I want it all to be one or the other. Because if you put drying oils with it, then you've got to wait for those to dry and oxidize to seal it with your sealer. Now this has the spike lavender oil essence in it. This also has a varnish, so you can use that on your oil sticks. Um, and the lean medium, the fat medium, those all can be used with the oil sticks as well. So that's a handy thing because then you've got all your little small sizes. It's not like you need tons of stuff with these to, like you do with oil paints, to liquid them down. Um, let's see, what else did we not cover? Um, the, the Sonalia Fixative Spray for your oil pastels. This tool was so helpful for oil pastels. Um, it's just a regular palette knife and I'm not even sure. Oh, it's still, it's the T35 and I didn't put it on here, but I was using it last night. It's the T35 Creative Mark palette knife for oil painting, but the shape and being round like this, if you get some of your oil pastels kind of scrubbed off in an area, you can take it and scrape it right back up down to the paper. No problem. Where's that one oil pastel? Oh. No. And with oil pastels, you get these kind of icky little crud marks. That can, You can just flick that off without... See how it doesn't disturb anything? If you use any other type of knife, I mean, look, you can take that. You can remove a layer if you want. Or if you've got multiple layers and you make a mistake, that blade is really sharp and easy to pull that off or you can just pick up your little goop and not disturb anything so I love that because right or left handed it's got that same surface on it um, or you know you could even take it and do much smaller kind of incising with it what it's like ASMR yeah <laughs> oh, you so, I mean, so that's cool. So I love that knife and I, last night I was like, I probably better bring that to show. All right, any questions? Does anybody want to see any of those oil brands put on just to see the difference, a stick of each of the oil brands? Are you Think really? that would probably be good? Yes? You're gonna ask and then not do it? Huh? No, yeah, you said it. You, you said it. it, you better do it. No, I'm, I'm fine with doing it. I just wanna make sure people, it's been so quiet. Everybody and, wants you to use everything. Want to make sure everybody <laughs> doesn't sleep. Honestly, honestly, yeah, everybody wants you to use everything. Earlier every time. I was like, oh, swatch that stuff, sis. <laughs> Crack me up. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> All right, six. And then from the, like, a lesser one, one of these, and um, these, and maybe a couple of the small uh, 
the small uh, Mungio gallery sets just to try kind of maybe some both oil pastel and oil stick. It, YouTube cut out. Can you repeat that? Okay. That's fine. So I got these Sennelier starter sets, even though they're unwrapped, we didn't use them from, from this specific show because I really want people to be able to see themselves what the difference is. Unfortunately, we can't just give away all, there's not cheap. So especially the oil sticks. So one winner is going to get the Sennelier test pack of the oil sticks and the oil pastels to try them against each other. And then one person will get get the little Arnuff sample stick, the little Shiva sample stick, and we'll do some type of oil pastel, probably one of the, um, maybe the Mungio Metallics and, and, and uh, maybe the uh, gallery smaller starter standard sticks, just to uh, have to try. So two people will get a little something something to see what the difference kind of is between the two um, and get a feel for it. How about that? Katie's like, oh, it takes I, a long time for her to put it in the... Yeah, I've got to figure out how to get the... You've got to import every single person's username. I can't all import that. all the people's usernames on YouTube. That's the problem. Ah, so I have to I have to go through them. single one of uh, Manually. Okay. So. I'm sorry. She's a rock star. Clap for Katie. She's doing it because she loves you. <laughs> all right. So let's see, we started out with the Shiva, right? Okay, so we'll do this. Can you come over here? We'll do a standard color and then we'll do, ooh, okay. We're still gonna do this really pretty. I, you wanna see copper, don't you? I'll do the copper and the blue for you. Okay. Obviously. Because, because I love you. Because you. Because you got me coffee and you're gonna be really patient and help somebody win something. Okay. What, coffee is a necessity before this starts? Yeah, oh, yes. Okay. It's not even a thing. <laughs> okay, here we go. So this is the Shiva oil stick. Oh, wait, I want it ready. That's already, I've got to get the rag that's already, um, oh, you know what, I didn't, I didn't swatch the, the um, metallics. So let me. I have a request. Yes. Um. If you could do a little color mixing with the primary set, it would make one of our YouTube viewers happy. Yes. That would be fine. Okay. All right. So see the skin? Oh. It's goopy. So you can see the difference where it's cloudier and then it's shinier. All right. Oh, wow. That's just... Look how pretty that is. So that's the Shiva... One that's the iridescent. Uh, you want to see the copper one, I'm sure. Always. And mm -hmm. well, Pat is watching. We don't do it all. Never here at the end. All right. That's not true. Real quick. Ooh, look at this. Yes. Oil pastel. The Diartani. Uh, Dr. Bounce. The oil pastel. Yes. Mm -hmm. The oil pastel fixative. Mm -hmm. The Sennelier fixative. How many coats? Does that take? I would do multiple thin ones. Uh, that big painting that I did because it's canvas, so it's textured, and because canvas is more flexible, right? I did eight coats overall total, but I did them very thin and let it dry well in between. And I can, add, and I mean that that's been in my office what Frida for two years probably, yeah. and it's been at a show out of state. And been traveling back and forth and that like 12 hours away show um and it still hasn't been retouched and it doesn't come no off it's good off. so can you use either or both of these on watercolor paper with the oil pastels yes because remember they're an oil that is just a neutral oil that never dries with the oil sticks you have to prime it first because you need a barrier because the oil is acidic in oil sticks it will eat into your work or into your substrate okay so here's the shiva regular sticks so this is an all red here's our 
two azo yellow yes good rule of thumb with oil sticks is treat them the same you would an oil if you were painting with oils correct? yes okay and then uh where's the ultramarine blue i don't want to do the favorite the favorite's gone okay so here's our primaries who knows okay and then um let's see did they have a clear stick with this no we're gonna just do this all right do the stubby so here we go hmm oh yeah we could do that here hold on all right you and your brushes it's like they make artists that future mom on purpose okay so there's that's a, pretty mm -hmm. that's ultramarine blue and azo yellow so it's not as you know happy mixing is wouldn't be my choice of mixing colors but probably shouldn't mix these with your fingers no unless you're wearing gloves yes what palette knife was that again what palette knife uh the t35 i believe is it t35, t35 creative merc hopes if i showed the whole thing huh i think I've, <laughs> i think i literally have like maybe five or six of them because i use them for everything because i love that shape and it's just a happy little round shape it's like a little happy little, 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 fat, little fat all right so there's the shiva all right oil bar um ba -da -ba -ba. where are you going i'm red heat i'm gonna go right here okay you can see the skin there versus the can oh, you see yeah. where it cuts oh, it's okay see how much drier that is i'm really having to work it to get it that was much creamier but that's what everybody was saying about those yep you see the skin's popping up Ugh. on that the yellow Maybe is creamier like than the See, that's blended with the stick. She's okay. Just okay. All right, let's work with this. It blended pretty well, though. Mm -hmm. It's got good body to it. You can tell there's more, uh, like a beeswax instead of like an inert mineral wax. You can. You can feel the difference between that and some. Are you putting your finger in it? Can you put your finger in it on purpose, Amanda? It wasn't as bad as the other one. Can we go back? Can, can we look at Amy's hands, hands, Amanda? It's not that bad. Okay. Uh, the Arnett. What color do we want, Amanda? The pewter was really nice. Pewter and copper. The bronze was really pretty too. Are you just using metallic? I'm going to do the right Those smell more like oil paint than the rest of them, actually. It's Ravenclaw colors are bronze and navy. Huh? Because Ravenclaw colors are bronze and navy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at that. That's beautiful. Isn't that just... And look at look at how it's so look juicy. At, okay, so look at look at how all of a sudden it's coming off really smooth. That's from the friction. See all the the heating up a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can feel it all of a sudden get really soft and really slick. And wiping it. Look at look at this because it's so liquidy now from my lipstick or chapstick. Yes. Okay. One other one other uh, metallic color. Amanda, what do you want? The pewter is really pretty. make a pretty color? If you you want the gold? Hmm? Well, I don't know how the metallics will. We can try it. Do a light color. That one. Gold. Do the gold. <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks, Amanda. Okay. See, at first it's it's slippery. Then look at how it really Ooh. starts coming off. That's Daddy and I are here for it. <laughs> You know what? As long as I've got this, That's pretty. let's use the palette knife and show how you can just palette knife. <laughs> okay. I mean, hold on, hold on. Oh, that's fun. That's how liquidy that is. See, it's just like using regular paint. We can do that with a couple of the colors, and we'll mix a color with it. Oh, the Arnoff. Let me find my 
I don't know why I'm Goldfinger. Well. Hey. Yeah, I know. I don't, can't find the two. Here we go. Somebody wants to see all the colors in the box. Okay. There's the metallics and my metallic. -y. Ooh, I'm sparkly. Okay. Um. All right. This pink was really beautiful. I'm getting that out. Not a pink person. Can I flip this over? Got yes. Got the color out. Was like. Are you have enough room? Do you think there's a difference across colors? Like this. one would be creamier, or they should all be around? No, the their formulation. It would probably depend on the brand, but with RNF, I would imagine it's going to be about the same. Okay. Look at that. That's oh, a little pink pig if I've ever seen one. How pretty is that? Mm. Reminds me of bubblegum. The pink? Mm hmm. Or like an eraser. Peppa pig. Peppa pig. Peppa pig. All right, so let's do, um, we'll take a little bit of this. Let's take some of the, well, I don't want to use the cobalt. We'll take the Viennese green and this yellow since it's a yellow and not a white. There's an indigo over here. Hmm? What color is that? Indigo? Okay, we'll use that with the with that yellowish color. Alright. Where are you going? Here? Uh, let's get a clean paint. paint piece, it seems like that would be. This is so got metallic. Nice. This is gonna be a mess to clean up tomorrow. Okay, now I've gotta take the uh not the okay, first time. So here this is gonna be where you can see what the skin looks like. So this is when you unwrap them, they're like this. Oh, nothing's coming off of that, right? Do it again. This is dry. Okay, the paint it's is up like under this. It's kind of like a soft cheese to me. It is. It like is. A, not a soft cheese. It's like a rind. Like a baby bell. Okay. Yeah, those things. Oops, this is, oh, that's good. I apparently had squishy. Question. Yes. Can you paint over the oil sticks with traditional oils, or will the wax in the sticks cause any issues? No, it won't. Just like you can use cold wax with it, with oils. It's it's not gonna. It's got a drying oil in it still, right? And it's only enough wax to hold it together, Frida. It's not. Um, they asked if you can paint over these with traditional oils, and if there's going to be a problem. There's only enough wax in this to make this hard enough to form the stick. And can you use like lavender thinner with it or? Yes. Okay, okay um, now see how hard that is right there? I know right. lots of artists who use them for their underpaintings so they can do quick and gestural and mm -hmm. crazy and then go back over and refi refine it. I did the, this painting was done with that um, for the shape, not for the face, but because I knew that that would take it a while for the, the blue to dry, but for the body shape and all that, that was all laid out with that. All right. Okay, see, two hard pieces. That's pretty. See? Those indigo sticks we've had for years and years and years. I mean, that was an old stick. Wasn't yeah. It? So look. It's been floating around the studio for a while. Uh, yeah. So cool. see, that's indigo with this, with brilliant yellow. Mm -hmm. Brilliant yellow, extra pale. Yeah, I need to wash my hands because that's got a, that's, that's got cab in it. So see, that's how easy that, that's a stick, but look how quickly it becomes more of a liquid paint. Okay. Uh, so now now the sennelliers we've got, and then we've, we've, we've shown them all. I feel like I know this answer, but is beeswax fat or lean? Beeswax is neither, because okay. it's not, fat or lean means, means how much fat is in an oil. Oh, okay. 
it's beeswax not does not is just has body. It does not have any oil, so it's neither. Hmm. But it's still okay to go under oil. Huh? It's still okay to go under oil. If it's within the medium, yes, it just okay. has to have that oil in it to help it dry to it. Otherwise, it would just be like putting a big slab of fat in the middle. You know, like a big something that's not going to dry. It needs that oil around it mm -hmm. to help it dry and more solidify. Oh, okay. Wax is just wax, right? Otherwise, right? Okay. It might seem like a candle, a wax beeswax candle might seem dry in in kind of a solid form, but as soon as it gets heated, it starts becoming viscous and loose. Okay. So it's like with the oil, you need that air to and the mixture to help it kind of more become a solid thing. I don't want to have the camera open this up. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. All right. Boom. Boom. I've got to hold this so this pop doesn't pop off. All right. So what color should be one of this? This looks pretty. Okay. So. It's a little drier initially than the RNF, but look how quickly it turns very liquidy. Just not quite as wet as the RNF. The RNF to me is like the wettest of the sticks. How do they smell? This is a safflower, so it's not quite as stinky as linseed. My whole um, condo smelled like it's oil it's the Shiva. The Shiva uses a refined linseed oil. Refined linseed oil is smellier than cold pressed linseed oil that's not heat treated. There's something in the heat treating that like when you heat an oil for cooking, how it gets stronger smelling, but the oil just out of the container before you start all is strong, right? It's the same the same way with linseed oil to me. Okay. What can, paper are you working on? I'm working on the Arsha's oil paper pad. It's a 12 by 16 oil pad. Isn't that nice? It's so liquidy. Any other color? One more color. The blue. Harry Winkle. Nope, this one. Oh, okay. So go for two. Oh, the sky blue. This it's an artist color. It's not Wait, color. gotta put it over here so we can see. Oh. Well, I just, <laughs> well, I didn't say blurple, so you're welcome. Blurple. Is that the technical artist color? Mm -hmm. Okay. Light. I can't even put blue, blue and violet together. <laughs> All right, and then let's do this. You wanted the sky blue, Amanda? Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's a little that too is. Carolina blue for my taste there. It's, it's purplier than that. So it's got some class. <laughs> it's a little bit like blurple. See? And let's uh, take it, one of the oil scrubby things and I've got it. I want to close this so it's not. Purple. <laughs> the blue and the purple? Uh -huh. We can. Uh, here. Watch. I'm just impressed on like how little it actually takes. See? See, so you can actually pull it up off a painting and you could work it with a palette knife. You can kind of scrape back down. It just gives you a lot of... Can you mix the two? What two? The two brands? Can you? Yes. Yeah, they don't know any different. <laughs> They're, no, no, not with, not with those crazy French. Yes. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it gives you lots of options. It, it takes, it takes traditional oil painting, which is something that's kind of a little more cut and dried, and it opens you up to much kind of larger gesture and expression and almost like a drawing mm -hmm. medium if you will um sure it's really good if you've been just using traditional oils and need to like loosen up yes. and break out of your rut why do you think i used them for my vacation to make make amy be sparkly <laughs> i can't get it off it's gonna just be on there for the rest of the day you can be sparkly. All right. Are there any last questions, Frida? Can you use oil sticks for mono printing? Uh, I mean, theoretically, you probably could. It just, I don't know if they would be quite liquidy enough to give you what you would want for that. And just the cleanup and stuff. And 
I'm going to say this. It's not the popular thing to say, I'm sure, uh, from the oil manufacturer, oil stick manufacturers. Oil sticks are kind of pricey. They're kind of expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's because a lot of care and, you know, chemistry and thought and concern goes into these. They are way more expensive than traditional oils. If you're wanting to do monoprinting where you've got a lot of waste, I would I know suggest it's worth that. that it's probably not worth it. Yeah. Now, could you then draw over your monoprint? Yes. Then you're not wasting it, and then it's a much more controlled thing. But, you know, you've got series on these, so they start jumping pretty quickly with the, with the higher-end ones. Somebody just mentioned they've used them for, like, gel printing. Mm -hmm. And it worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. But you can get more off of yes. a yes, jelly plate than you can, pulling, yeah. Yeah, you can pull kind of your ghost prints and all that. So, and I guess you could do that with monoprinting technically too, but it yeah. just, um, uh, it would not be the cost effective medium of choice for me. So, all right. Were there any other questions at all, ladies? Hopefully, does everybody understand the difference between the oil pastels now and the oil sticks with clear anybody who caught us late? Oil pastels are made with mineral oil. That is not a drying oil. That means technically they never dry. You'll be able to rub your hands through it 10 years from now and it will still come up. You will need to seal them with a fixative. A fixative is not a varnish. It's not painted on. It's sprayed on and it's, an it's a resin that actually seals it that prevents dust and dirt and stuff from damaging it oil sticks and oil bars are actually oil paint that does oxidize that does dry that does form a very tough durable permanent film oils it can be used with your encaustics it can use these some of the creative ways people have discussed with monoprinting and, and gel print, plate printing and things like that just keep in mind that you're going to have to use solvents to clean it up really easily so um that's something to consider any other questions, ladies? Um, no. Okay. All right. Well, it looks like there's been a hurricane that's blown through here without the water. I, I hope everybody enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little something new. I hope you learned kind of where maybe some of these things can be used in conjunction, either in mixed media or with some of your other um, endeavors take something that you already do like kind of make it a little more modern and fun and um add a little sparkle amanda with those metallic sticks sparkle amanda likes the sparkle um next week our episode 66 everybody's favorite guest will campbell is going to come on in a serious role which is going to be entertaining because we all know will's a little was always good for a laugh but he is a professional photographer and he is going to teach us how to take for our artist self-improvement series how to take photos of our artwork both with digital cameras and with your cell phone to be able to properly record your art in the best light possible to be able to properly edit your art for either applying to shows if you're trying to get a work into a jury show you're trying to create a portfolio of your pieces even if you're just trying to create a record you should be t creating a record of your pieces you need to pet peeve of katie's yes, yes. okay <laughs> pet peeve of katie's and mine with our self-portrait contest that we have that a lot of people inquire about that a lot of people you know wanting to know the winners all of our contests lots of people entering Best this is why we're doing this this coming week because katie and i look at all the stuff that comes through and have to Pair out the things that you may have created, the freaking Mona Lisa, yeah. and then you take a picture of it sitting here, and you can see your coffee cup, and you can see the outside of it, and your cat is photobombing the yeah. picture, <laughs> or the chair leg, and then we get it, and guess what? Our rules are such where we have to yeah. toss that image, and it can't be considered because you didn't crop it to the outer edges of the artwork. This is how you kill the quality yeah. of your work with your own incompetency. I'm just going to say it. It doesn't mean that or maybe carelessly. you don't know how to yeah. do it, but it just it means that you're hurting yourself, and yeah. that's not what you want to do. You always want to present yourself in the best And that's almost light. every contest, every art contest I know of. It, but it's not just one or two. It's like, 
It's dozens. You take the time dozens. and care to paint it. Take the time dozens. and care to photograph yes. it. And, and the care to buy quality archival products. And then you take horrible photos. So Will, your finger. Will has, just, has agreed to help us help you learn how to take proper photos of your artwork, guys. So join us for that next week. Bring all your questions. If there's questions you had, write them down now so you don't forget. Yes, Frida. There's gold leafing on that painting. Hide it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Take that away before we'll get Yeah. There. It's glued. It's glued <laughs> down. He done Mikey G. So, um, but we will see you next week where we will learn how to take proper photos of our art. Okay, guys. Have a good week. We will see you later.